Week two of the NFL preseason kicking off tonight. Two Super Bowl rematches on the docket. Super Bowl 45, Packers and Steelers. Um, of course, we won't see many of the principals from that game playing tonight. For Pittsburgh, really just Juju Smith-Schuster. We'll see who takes the field for the Green Bay Packers. The Pack, though, five and a half point favorites. See a little Aaron Rodgers, some Brett Hundley, some Deshaun Kaiser. Over under 43 points. Super Bowl rematch from this February. Patriots and Eagles. Tom Brady could play the entire first half of that game. And that's why New England is a four-point favorite. And we've got the Jets in our nation's capital against the Redskins. Sam Darnold trying to earn that quarterback job for Gang Green. While Alex Smith set to make his Redskins debut after sitting out week one's game. Let's get some winning picks for Thursday night in the preseason. And we do that with our guy, our Vegas insider, Todd Furman. Todd, obviously the stakes tonight just as high for the Eagles and Patriots as they were that first Sunday in February. The Patriots can get full revenge for losing Super Bowl 52 if they can win this preseason game tonight or not. New England you know what, is a four-point favorite. You know favorite. what, Nick? Yeah, if Tom goes out there and looks outstanding, it's going to erase memories of, of what happened when they played the Eagles and that fateful Sunday in February that you, that you referenced. When you look at this number, it's been very interesting to try and keep tabs on throughout the course of the week. New England opened as a three-and-a-half-point favorite. You saw the first wave of money coming on Philadelphia, but that was more or less a setup to lay the modest price with the Patriots. Nick Foles is going to get reps for the Eagles, but most likely you're going to see this first-team offense for the Eagles, maybe two series max. The only starting wide receiver is Mike Wallace as they look to build some chemistry there. No Alshon Jeffrey, no Nelson Aguilar. I think New England is going to have better depth. We're going to see enough Brian Hoyer in the second half. I actually agree with the move here. It's a lay it or don't play it type scenario. New England, they get a smidgen of redemption and cover the spread tonight against Philadelphia. Todd, was my pause too long in that intro I just gave you that you had to jump me there? Was, was that my fault or was that your fault? You know what, it was a little bit dramatic, and I'm so used to you know your time management skills looking like Andy Reid early in the show that I got to take a whole lot of information and condense it into a narrow window. So when you gave me the opportunity, I tried to come running through. See now, Todd, a good quarterback would never, ever throw his head coach under the bus. So I will not throw Rob Arciero under the bus for the time management. I would <laughs> never throw Rob under the bus for his time management. Of never. course, it's all my fault, whatever happens with the clock. Todd, let's move to the Steelers and the Packers. Green Bay, we normally don't see lines this big in a preseason game. Packers minus five and a half. But of course, no Ben, no Antonio Brown, no Le'Veon Bell. Thus, we get this number. Yeah, and this is a massive move, Nick. It actually opened Green Bay a two-and-a-half-point favorite and has ballooned out here. Uh, once you knew that Pittsburgh was going to kind of be reduced to a second-team offense, and the Steelers have plenty of reservations defensively, even if it is their first unit out there. Aaron Rodgers expected to be out there for a few series, but you hit on it in the lead-in, talking about this Green Bay Packers backup quarterback battle. Will it be Brett Hundley? Will it be Deshaun Kaiser? Those are the kind of things you want to look for in the preseason, and it also doesn't hurt that Aaron Rodgers called out pretty much every wide receiver on this roster. Look for Green Bay to be fully engaged. They were dominant with their depth in their opener against the Titans. I think more of the same here. It's tough to lay six in the preseason, uh, but I would be surprised if the Steelers have any success moving the football. Jets and the Redskins is a pretty fascinating preseason game, Todd. We know Alex Smith going to make his Redskins debut. Who knows how long we'll see him play. Um, I kind of like the Jets in this spot, even as, as the road dog here, getting a plus one here, is gang green because Darnold's going to play hard. Teddy Bridgewater is going to play hard. Josh McCown is going to play hard. All three of these guys are fighting to be the team starting quarterback. Uh, well, it's been so interesting, Nick, about this number. We did see the Redskins open as a field goal favorite, and money has come pouring in the Jets. It's actually flipped where the Jets are minus one in some locations now. And you talk about the quarterback battle for the Jets. Ultimately, I think that makes them the play for the full game. But I would be a little bit concerned about the Jets' first teamers, led by Sam Darnold, matching up with the Redskins early on. So it wouldn't shock me in the least if the Redskins go into the break with a lead, much like they had against New England in their first preseason game, and it's the Jets with some of that quarterback depth you referenced and the fact that those guys are trying to show out and really look to make, to make an impression on head coach Todd Bowles and the rest of the Jets front office, that the Jets become the better play for the full game. You can still grab the Jets plus one, go ahead and do so, uh, but if the number's already flipped and you're particular location. I'm not sure I'd be running a lay one knowing you could have taken three early in the week. Out of the three plays, Todd, that you just gave us, which one is your best bet for Thursday night? You know, I'll make a case for New England because that's the number that hasn't really been buried. I do think Green Bay and the Jets ultimately cover, but one thing, Nick, we do, we've done this enough for a couple of years. I can't tell people, even during the preseason, to chase three to four point line moves. 
So I think New England's redemption ultimately gets them to the window and you can lay the floor with the Pats. And of course, if and when the Patriots win this game tonight, the memories of Super Bowl 52 will be erased and the Patriots will have their revenge. Todd Furman, we appreciate the time. Best of luck on Thursday night. We will talk to you on Friday here on CBS Sports HQ. Same to you, my friend. Always a pleasure.